It was an appalling defeat, the worst in almost a year, despite American-led airstrikes. The Iraqi army's ramshackle withdrawal from Ramadi, calling into serious question coalition strategy, as well as Iraq's very survival as a country. These IS militants now control the capital of Iraq's biggest province. They don't have any air power, but they seem more determined to die for their so-called caliphate than Iraq's army does to defend Iraq. The final IS assault included six suicide bombers, at which government forces took flight. Among the alleged bombers was Abu Musa al-Britani. IS claim he was British. The Foreign Office told us it's aware of that claim, but it was very difficult to confirm. And from their latest video, the city now flying the IS flag looks deserted. Iraqi officials say at least 500 people have been killed in the last two days of executions and fighting. The Americans had been arming and training those defending Ramadi, and it's feared a large cache of those weapons has now fallen into IS hands. Oh. Iraqi reinforcements were seen heading towards the city today, but some of those who've escaped from Iraq's Sunni heartland say they were betrayed by their own Shia-dominated government. We're from Ramadi police. We called the security services and army for help from 10 o'clock at night till 10 o'clock in the morning. We asked for reinforcements and arms, but nobody answered our call. They said they cannot help. The army withdrew and left us alone. Thousands of refugees have been trying to reach Baghdad, but they've been held back by their own troops. Civilians asked for sponsors to vouch for them before they can cross this bridge over the Euphrates River. Whatever the terrible dangers they've left behind. Chaos, violence and terror spread on the streets. Shells and bombs landed randomly on houses. The UN reckons over 100,000 Iraqis have fled from Ramadi in the last few weeks. Add to that almost three million Iraqis internally displaced since last year, and Iraq's hospitality towards its own people is now itself in danger of running out. The Prime Minister Haider al-Abadi has appeared on television to reassert his authority. In reality, he's called in the Shia militia to liberate Ramadi as his last resort. American generals had argued that many Shia militiamen are loyal to Iran and that Sunni tribesmen should fight instead. But in Ramadi, that plan never really got off the ground. And so these are the cavalry, Shia gunmen now reported to be heading towards Ramadi. Some are answerable to the government, some to Iran. And if they look just as terrifying as the Sunni jihadists of IS, well, to many Iraqis, they really are. They are being sent to Ramadi now and are not going to be welcomed by a largely Iraqi Sunni Arab population who will see them as potentially hostile. Also, these militias have gone into cities like Tikrit and committed crimes themselves. They are no angels. Tonight, so-called Islamic State released photographs of the prisoners it has released from one of Ramadi's jails, many of them no doubt willing recruits to the jihadist cause. While American-led airstrikes are set to continue, this time in support of Shia militia, with a terrible record of sectarian violence.